we visited Frito-Lay to find out what the semi's interior looks like, and how it drives and charges. Tesla fans with ruffled feathers over perpetually delayed products can finally lay off the brand. After much waiting, only four years late, the electric Tesla semi's first customer, PepsiCo, has taken delivery of its first examples of the big rig. The beverage and snack food conglomerate's Frito-Lay division will take center stage in the company's Tesla truck rollout plans at its Modesto, California, factory and distribution center, so we visited the upgraded 80-acre zero-emissions facility to experience the Tesla Semi firsthand and talk to its drivers about what it's like to drive. Frito-Lay's 15 new Tesla Semis made their debut at an event celebrating the Modesto factory's transformation into a zero-emissions pilot project for Pepsi as it aims to achieve zero emissions across its operations by 2040. The revamped facility is massive, 500,000 square feet dedicated to turning potatoes and corn into Lay's, Ruffles, Doritos, Cheetos, and Fritos chips, powered by a massive on-site solar facility and local renewable energy projects, both backed by 2.7 megawatt hours of on-site battery storage. Helping the factory distribute its snacks throughout the American West are three electric BYD 8Y yard tractors, six Peterbilt 220EV electric box trucks for local last mile deliveries, 38 natural gas powered Volvo VNL trucks for long distance slogs, and of course, six, and counting, Tesla semis, used for out and back trips across the region. Although Tesla is famously, and sometimes annoyingly, secretive about sharing its vehicle specs, we were able to gather a few details from Frito Lay its drivers, and Tesla representatives. The Tesla Semi's powertrain is as good a place as any to start. Making three times the power of the average diesel Semi, according to a media-trained Tesla rep, the electric Tesla Semi effectively sports a lightly modified Model S plaid tri-motor powertrain spun around backward. The Model S's front motor drives the Semi's rear axle, functioning as the highway drive unit, while the plaid's dual rear motors are mounted on the Semi's middle axle. These motors feature a Rivian-like clutch, allowing them to be used for acceleration and to decouple once at speed for improved efficiency. Considering the best-selling semi in the US, the Freightliner Cascadia, sports 350 horsepower in its basic form and that three times that figure is 1050, we're fairly confident in saying the semi matches the Model S and Model X Plaid's 1020 horsepower, and possibly its 1050 pounds to foot of torque, as well. The out and backs are crucial because at the moment there are few places to charge an electric Tesla semi. Frito-Lay installed four superchargers on-site and dedicated Tesla semi parking stalls, all of which feature a unique squarish plug-in compatible with any other Tesla we're aware of. The chargers are capable of outputting 750 kilowatts, far exceeding the 250 kilowatt peak rates of Tesla's passenger vehicles and existing supercharger network. That, says Frito-Lay, is good enough to charge its fleet of Tesla semis from nearly empty to 70% in about a half hour, good for 400 miles, and to 100% in about 90 minutes. Interestingly, the four Tesla chargers are positioned in such a way that the semis must unhitch their trailers and back in to plug into each one's charge port, which is located on the driver's side, just forward of the middle axle. Tap the port, and it automatically motors open or closed, while the braided charger cable is about as thick as a soda can and is easier to manage than the DC fast charger cables you find at a typical Electrify America station. Neither Tesla nor PepsiCo disclosed the semi's price, but Frito-Lay employees told us Tesla is responsible for all maintenance and service for the first year. We weren't able to drive the semi, though one of Frito-Lay's drivers said it drove like a car and called it incredibly comfortable, but we were able to spend a good amount of time poking around inside. Pull the electric door handle release on either side of the truck, and the rear opening doors reveal a bus-like set of steps. Climb up and into the semi's cabin and you find, as our photographer put it, more air and empty space than a Lay's bag. The roughly 3 by 7 foot space features a rubberized subway-like floor, Tesla headliner cloth on the walls, a jump seat on the right side, and plenty of headroom to enable a 6-footer to walk around and stretch. Walk around to the captain's chair, plop down into the suspended center seat and you have a commanding view of the road with great visibility. The massive side-view mirrors are backed up by camera displays on the left and right infotainment screens. Most functions in the semi are controlled by those displays. Aside from the camera views, the left display solely shows truck status information such as tire pressure, while the right display functions as the main infotainment interface. It features suspension settings, trailer hitch controls, HVAC functions, including the seat heater settings, navigation, trip functions, and a host of apps, such as Spotify and karaoke. You can see every screen in the Tesla Semi in our photo gallery, there are quite a few. Notably absent, though, is a dedicated software suite for free-to-lay drivers, such as what Rivian offers for Amazon drivers in its EDV Prime van, 
and bright drop offers on the Zebo 600 for FedEx drivers. Instead, the drivers use the Tesla app on their phones as a key and rely on a PepsiCo supplied portable tablet kept in the storage cubby on the cabin's right side, next to two wireless phone chargers, cup holders, and switches for the hazards, parking brake, and trailer brake air supply. Those latter three switches are some of the cabin's few physical controls. They're joined by some steering wheel rockers, an automatic gear selector and windshield wipers.